In this tab, we're going to analyze our monthly spending. So our monthly spending is going to start at $1,200 a month. That's one of our parameters here. It's going to increase based on inflation, but it's going to also depend on the time of the year that we're in. We have this chart over here that's going to tell us that in some months, we tend to spend more than in other months. So for example, we tend to spend a little bit more in the summer and also at the end of the year, likely because of holidays. So we're going to build that into our budget projections. So let's start out same as we did before with sequence 60 and getting the year. But actually, before I write those formulas, I'm going to remember that we did that on the rent cost tab. So if I go over to the rent cost tab, I can come over here and just copy those formulas, those columns I've already written, and save myself a little time. Whenever possible, you want to recycle parts of your model to reuse it and just make yourself more efficient. Now, month of year, here it's going to be important for my seasonality table that I have the month 1 through 12 rather than the months 1 through 60. So I'm going to write a formula here that just takes the month I'm in and subtracts the year I'm in minus 1 times 12. So in the first month, it's going to take the month, the year I'm in, 1 minus 1 is 0, so it's not going to make any adjustment. Once I get to year 2, though, well, then it's going to take 2 minus 1 times 12, so that's going to be 12, and so it's going to adjust 13, for example, down to 12, and 14, sorry, 13 down to 1, and 14 down to 2. So it's going to give me those 1 through 12 all the way through my model, and that's just going to serve as a nice way to use my lookups to pull in my monthly seasonality, and we'll see that in just a second. Now my base spending, let's make that equal to my initial monthly budget. That's not going to change. Here's my seasonality factor that I was talking about. I'm going to use a VLOOKUP on the month of the year. You could use an XLOOKUP or an index match here just as easily, whichever your preference is. Now for the inflation factor, here's where we're going to need monthly inflation. Right now we have a parameter that gives us annual inflation of 4%. Our second question down here is what's the monthly inflation rate? Well, we're going to keep the interest rate simple. We're just going to take that and divide by 12. So in this case, 33 basis points a month. So to get our inflation factor then, we're going to take 1 plus that rate, making sure that we lock it, and raise to the number of months. So we're essentially compounding up that 33 basis points as we get further in time. And so that's going to mean that essentially the, the inflation is building upon itself. And let's see what that looks like in just one second. Before we do, let's calculate our monthly spending. All that's going to be is our base spending times our seasonality factor times our inflation factor. And now we can take this whole model and copy it down. So control shift across down arrow and then control D to fill down. And now we have our monthly spending across. And we see our inflation factor has gone from point, you know, 30 basis points in the first month to a cumulative 22% over the course of the five years. So that is the compounding coming into play. So let's take those numbers and just put them into our answers. Our first one, though, is a little bit of a dynamic lookup. So in this case, we want to figure out the seasonality factor in month 26, which is our parameter up here in cell F5. So we can use an X lookup. As long as we don't type 26, right, that's going to be hard coding the value. It's not going to be dynamic. We need to reference that F5 cell. We're going to look that up over here in our months. And what we want to get back then is our seasonality factor that we already built in here. So let's build that in. We get our answer right there. Now we just need to pull our inflation factor in at the first year. Inflation factor for the last year. We get both of those in there. Those look correct. Now we need our monthly spending in month one. This is just checking that our model is correct across a couple different steps. Those look good. And now just our total spend across all the months. Let's add that up with a sum. And we have all of our answers correct right here. So we see that our spending increases over time. Uh, it does so with the inflation factor, but there's also the seasonality to it that we're going to build in. Now in the next tab, on the budget tab, we're going to pull this all in and kind of see how much money we have extra or not enough at the end of the, each month and see what that looks like over the five-year period. 